and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It's Tuesday, July 26, 2022, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a little bit later this morning. Futures currently are down. Um, looks like the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ are all poised to open, roughly about four-tenths of 1% lower. At least that's uh, where they sit now. Still got a little bit of time, though, almost two hours left before the opening bell, so things could change, but that's where we are right now. Slightly worse futures on the NASDAQ. Um, yeah, we got some uh, not-so-great news from Walmart uh, yesterday after the close. Walmart uh, gave us a little bit of a warning, uh, indicated that uh, inflation hit consumer spending, and therefore they cut their forecast. Uh, GM came up short of expectations. Uh, talking about supply chain issues. We got the Fed starting to meet today uh, with an announcement tomorrow. We got GDP on deck this week. <clears throat> Excuse me, GDP will be out on Thursday morning. The expectation there is for a slight positive, slightly positive GDP. Uh, remember, we had a negative GDP in the first quarter. This is the first reading of the second quarter. So if we do see a negative reading, uh, at least by uh, old definition, um, that would be a recession. That's uh, two consecutive negative readings. Let's face it, the economy is slowed. I think everyone knows that. Um, and whether or not this is technically um, a recession by that definition or not really doesn't make a whole lot of difference to me. Still a slowing economy. Um, GDP has certainly contracted quite a bit from where we were. And that, along with inflation, is making it a very difficult assignment for the Fed. They've got to pick their poison. I think they will continue to pick their poison, um, being inflation being their poison, that is, um, because I think they're going to hike rates again. And they may continue to talk tough, although I believe this is going to be their last rate hike. Um, we'll see. Anyhow, um, before we get started, uh, let me go through the agenda for today. We're going to start off with the daily market recap jump into talking technically. I want to talk a little bit about gaps, uh, especially gaps on our major indices. Uh, I'm going to get into a couple of uh, mailbag questions, go through earning spotlight, and then wrap up the show with the three you must see. We will start off, though, with the daily market recap in just a minute. First, I'm going to take you over to earningsbeats.com, where if you scroll down, you will find an area where you can sign up for our free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. This is a newsletter that I publish three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, typically published about an hour before the market opens. We try to get it out around 8.30 a.m. Eastern. All it takes is a name, email address, hit that subscribe button, no credit card required. It's completely free, um, and you can unsubscribe at any time. One uh, the other benefit of being a subscriber to our EB Digest is we do have a number of free events each quarter. And we always reach out to our EB Digest subscribers to come join us for these events. They tend to be very educational in nature. Um, and, and the Digest itself will pre present perhaps trading opportunities. That, of course, is completely up to you. But the whole idea is just to kind of teach everyone the way we look at the market, and the way we look at trading, giving some of our strategies and so forth. Um, let's go ahead and get this thing rolling, though. I'm going to jump into the daily market recap where yesterday we saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average finish up 91, S&P 500 up five, NASDAQ, however, down 51. So we've seen a little bit of that bifurcation lately where the NASDAQ has not been performing quite as well as the Dow and the S&P 500. But after the big rally uh, where the NASDAQ led, I think that kind of makes sense, get a little bit more profit taking in that area. Mid caps finished up about six tenths of 1%, small caps up about two thirds of 1%, so uh, pretty good action in the small cap and mid cap arena. From a sector perspective, energy jumped uh, about 3.7%. That was on the heels of crude oil prices uh, moving back up off of uh, the recent support level at about $93 a barrel. I don't know where we were, uh, where we closed yesterday, but uh, crude oil um, was up at about $96, $97 a barrel last time I looked yesterday. Utilities up one and a quarter percent. If 
financials up about two thirds of 1%. So those were your three leaders. The laggards included those aggressive areas, which is why the NASDAQ did not perform as well. Consumer discretionary down almost nine tenths of 1%. And then you had technology down a little bit more than six tenths of 1%. Those are the two key uh, sectors, in my opinion. Those are the two that tend to lead the market during uh, secular bull market rallies. And those are the two that have been leading of late. But that was not the case on Monday. We'll see if that changes as we get through the week, get through the Fed, get through GDP. A lot of economic reports, a ton of earnings reports. That's also going to play a big role. Apple, Microsoft, Google, all these companies, big companies coming out with their reports this week. So a lot for the market to digest. Uh, and then we'll figure out where we go from there. 10-year Treasury yield. Um, let's see. This morning, 10-year Treasury yield down seven basis points, back to 2.75%. So not showing up on this chart just yet, but 275 will take us down lower than these prior lows, and I think threatening major, major support area. Very interesting that the 10-year Treasury yield is trading down a, near a multi-month low as the Fed meets. Makes you go, hmm. I believe this is going to be the last hike. And I'm not saying that because I hope it's the last hike. I'm saying it because that's what the bond market's saying to me. The 10-year treasury yield should be going up. Investors should be demanding higher returns with inflation being a problem. When the bond market, when the yields start going down, it's telling me the bond market, bond traders don't have that expectation any, any longer. Why? Why not? Because they don't think inflation's a problem. And if inflation, if 10-year treasury yields rolling over and starts going lower and the Fed keeps hiking, I can tell you that the inversion is only going to grow. I'm talking about the yield, the yield curve, yield spread. We're going to have an inverted yield curve. I mean, we already do, depending on which what you're looking at. But the 10 year treasury yield, if it breaks down below 270, I would be really surprised if the Fed keeps pumping the gas in terms of these rate hikes. So I think we get one tomorrow. Um, after that, though, I believe they're going to be done. Again, that's what the bond market's telling me. We'll see. Um, economic reports out this week, just to give you a little idea of what we've got going on. As I mentioned, Fed. Meeting starts today, tomorrow at two o'clock, they will have their latest Fed policy statement. Um, I think everybody realizes they're gonna raise rates. So I don't think it has anything to do with that. I think it has everything to do with their language. And I expect that they're gonna to continue to talk tough because I think they want the market to realize that they are not going to give up the fight on inflation. But It'll be interesting to see what language changes. Let me just leave it at that. Anyhow, later this morning, we're going to get the Case-Shiller um, index out, the uh, FHFA house price index, consumer confidence, new home sales. Then on Wednesday, we've got durable goods, pending home sales. Of course, that FOMC announcement. Thursday, GDP and initial jobless claims. Initial jobless claims. I don't know if you've been paying attention. They've been higher than expected, probably nine of the last 10 weeks. The expectation keeps going up a little bit and it seems like the actual numbers keep exceeding it every week. So that's an indication that things definitely are slowing down the economy. Um, Friday, we've got personal income and spending, Chicago PMI, consumer sentiment, lots of things this week, along with all the earnings reports that are gonna be pouring out. I wanna say like 600 earnings reports. Uh, maybe more than that this week. All right. Talking technically. So here's the S&P 500. This is the chart that I primarily like to look at during talking technically, just to see what's going on here, because this is my benchmark. This is what I try to beat. Um, and so if I can kind of figure out which way it's going, I can start thinking about strategies to beat it. If I think we're in a, a new uptrend, 
a secular bull market uptrend, then it's going to tell me to be more aggressive. If I believe we're still in this cyclical bear market going lower, then I'm going to want to be more defensive, more cash. Well, I believe right now we're, I believe we're starting the bottoming process. I don't know yet if this is going to be a V bottom and we're just going to go straight back up. I think there are a couple of things we've got to look for. First, to the downside, when you're trending higher, you normally use these moving averages for support. We don't even have the 20 day back above the 50 yet. In order to be in an uptrending market, you need price above the 20 and you need 20 above the 50. That's kind of the configuration you're looking for. Now the 20 is gaining steam, it's trying to get through, but I think we're gonna need another leg higher on the S&P 500 for that 20 to break above the 50. Don't know if that's gonna happen, but I believe it's going to. I think we're gonna hold this 3,900 area. And I believe we're going to make a run back up here for about 4,180, 4,175. Maybe we touch 4,200. If we do stay in an uptrend through, and I'm talking about staying above our moving averages until then, that's going to be, I believe, the most interesting part on the chart. Because at that point, we'll have a neckline. Um, we'll have the lower low. We'll you know, that comes down here, we'll have the left side of the neckline form, we'll, then we'll have one more low that prints the head. This move back up to 4,200-ish, 4,175 would be the right side of that neckline. And then we could pull back one more time and that would potentially put in a bottoming uh, reverse head and shoulders. Don't know if that's how it's gonna play out, but that's one possibility. Another possibility is, you know, we got August and September coming up. And I think it's going to be very, very difficult for the market to just keep going up during the two worst months of the year. September, since 1950, September is the only month of the calendar year that we've seen the S&P 500 go lower more often than we've seen it go higher. All the other 11 months have gone up more than they've gone down cumulatively for the month. September has gone up 33 times, down 39 times on the S&P 500. So September, historically, you know, I, I like odds. I like probabilities. I like managing risk. You at least have to be aware September is not a good month for stocks. So do we make this run up during the latter part of July and maybe into August and then print that right shoulder in September where we're historically weak anyway? I don't know. It'll be interesting to watch. But that's what I'm looking for right now. You can see the PPO, the daily PPO is now climbed back positive. We've seen that before in this downtrend. I mean, once we lost it back in January, we had a move up in late March, went above the 20, which was above the 50. So it's not like this is unprecedented right here. The last move up you can see failed before we got the daily PPO to go positive. But on this move lower, you know, you do have lower prices, slightly higher PPO. So you got positive divergence there. Um, rotation was definitely favoring the bulls. Many of my, what I call sustainability ratios did not go to new lows with this S&P 500 low. We actually printed higher lows, which suggests money is rotating into aggressive areas. That's why I called the June bottom. And that's why I believe we are trending higher. Could we double bottom? I think it's possible. I would be long the market. I will be long the market unless we lose that low. Then I'll reevaluate. Otherwise, I will remain long. All right. Um, let's move on. So let's talk a little bit about gaps. This was an interesting question that came up. And actually, if we go back here, let's pull up the spider and let's look at what's going on right now. So when I'm looking at gaps, I prefer using the ETFs that track the major indices because many of the S&P 500 stocks don't open right at 930. Some of them are a little bit after 930, and especially the Dow is like that. So many times you look at the Dow Jones industrial average, and it doesn't quite look the same as the diamond because the diamond prices in where all of the Dow stocks are going to open as of 930. 
the Dow Jones doesn't actually print anything until all the stocks open. So you're not getting, you know, at 930, if a lot of the stocks haven't opened, you're not going to see much of a gap. So I always like to use the ETFs that track the major indices. So I like to use the spider. Now, there have been questions that have come up, you know, what about these open gaps back here? And in, and in particular, if I uh, just add a little bit of time here, annotate this. So, you know, I've had questions, well, you know, what about this gap right here? You know, shouldn't we go back and fill that? I mean, that's no big deal, right? Well, it's not really a big deal. And guess what? I mean, if you want to go back and fill some other gaps, here's one. Let's fill this gap. I mean, there's two gaps right there that we could go back and fill. The problem is when you bottom, a lot of times, you don't go back and backfill. A lot of times when you hit the final bottom in a bear market, you just go higher. And you don't get another chance to get back in. So, you know, I think that there are a lot of traders maybe waiting for these gaps to fill. But let me show you in the past what's happened. I want you, uh, this is 2009. So the very final bottom right here, just like we have currently back in June, the first move up was a gap. We never went back and filled that gap. After we went up for a little bit, we pulled back a little bit above that 20-day moving average. We gapped up. So there's a gap that was never filled. We pulled back, hit the 20 day, and that was it. That's why I keep talking about the 20 day is the key short-term support. Once we start trending, a lot of times we will trend right up above this 20 until we put in a negative divergence. Look at the negative divergence here. Lower PPO, higher price. Then we went below the 20. And actually went all the way back down and to these prior lows. Probably likely got a lot of the bears going again. Hey, we're below the 50 day, the 20s crossing. That's a death cross, but we didn't lose price support. And then we took off again to the upside. And there were other gaps in here along the way we probably could look at as well. But again, the gaps down at the bottom never got filled. Never. So something to think about. That was 2009. How about this is 2016? Look at these gaps at the bottom, the very last bottom. We had a couple of gaps here, never got, to, not, never got filled. Just kept going higher. Look at the trend above the 20 day until when? Until we had higher prices and lower PPO. Then we went back, tested price support, went below the 50 day. Again, scared the bears. This one really probably got everybody going. I'm not sure what that news was. That might have gotten me going a little bit. Um, but then once we hit that price support, then we started moving higher again. And like I said, there were these two days. I don't remember what happened. That was a pretty big drop in just a couple of days. But that was back in uh, 2016. Let's move on to 2018. So here was the fourth quarter. Here, were the, here was the moves up. Here's a gap from this level. See that red candle? We gapped up the next day. Where's our gap fill? I don't see a gap fill. We just kept going up. Kept trending higher above the 20-day until when? Until we started to see that PPO rollover. We've got a little bit of a break here. Still had a negative PPO, all the, negative divergence all the way out into April. And then we saw some selling, ABC correction there before we went higher. 2020, there's the big selling. When did these gaps fill? I see a bunch of them didn't get filled. Kept going higher. Got above that 20. What did we do? We kept tre trending above that 20. And so now we come back to today on the spider. If this is the bottom, and again, may not be. I'm not telling anybody it's a certainty i'm just i saw a lot of signals that suggested to me that wall street was calling it a bottom so i'm just announcing the signals i see but 
This one hasn't been straight up like some of the others. I mean, here, this was pretty much straight up. Pulled back a little bit and then back up again. This just was pretty much straight up. This one got a double bottom. Then it was straight up. Then all the way back in 2009, you know, there was no hesitation. So are, is all of that warning sign? You know, we're hesitating here a little bit more. Well, every bottom, every bottom and every bear market is different. Everything is going to be different. It's, you know, never, nothing is going to be exactly the same. What I do see is a bottom. We ended up putting in higher lows. So it wasn't straight back up. Well, it was for a week, but then we hesitated. Now we're moving back up. But I think now that we've kind of broken out of this sideways consolidation, watch the 20 day. That has been a fairly consistent thing to watch coming out of bear markets. That's why if we go back down below that 20 day, I'm going to be more nervous. I'm going to be thinking these lows could come into play. We might fill that gap. We might go all the way back down for a double bottom. That's what we had in 2016. We had that double bottom. That was the end. And that wasn't really a bear market. That was more of just a correction. But it was a weak period. Felt like a bear market. So let's watch the 20 day. If we bounce off that 20 day and go back up to new highs, I think it's really going to be painting a pretty bullish picture. All right, let's move on. So let's talk a little bit mailbag question. First question was, you know, the, the 253 day moving average of the equity only put call ratio started to rise, meaning that the options world was starting to turn bearish. Finally, so much complacency, so much bullishness. And I'm going to go forward because this is the chart I showed everyone back at Market Vision 2022. January 8th, I pulled this chart out, <clears throat> showed how much we had gone up in 22 months, showed how bullish the market, the options world had gotten, and the fact that we were just starting on this path to resetting sentiment. And that any move up, look at this move up. What'd the market do? Not much. This move up, what'd the market do? Not much. This move up, what'd the market do? Well, that was a bear market. That was a big bear market. My point is, once you reach a point of complacency and you start moving back up, you've run out of buyers. We ran out of buyers in this market. It's hard to keep a market going when you run out of buyers. We needed this to reset. Look what we're doing. Look what the market's doing. Looks a little bit more like what we had in 2007 to 2009. But back then we were still in a secular bear market that started in 2000. Here we're in a secular bull market. I think it's different my opinion. But the question is, don't we need to see this start to turn down before this can go up? And my answer would be no. And the reason I say that is right now, if you look at the equity only put call ratio, let's go back, um, let me grab one of these charts. So the equity only put call ratio, get rid of some of the stuff we don't need here. And let's go back two years. Right now, you know, we're six months in, basically maybe seven months into 2022. That means we still have five months of last year's readings that we have to get through. So I believe we've already, I think we topped on the five day moving average. I mean, I think this was probably as high as it's gonna get in terms of the equity only put call ratio we topped right at that June bottom. So I think we're starting to come back down a little bit now on the equity only. But as we do in the market rebounds, these readings up here are still much higher than the readings they're gonna replace. We had readings all the way down into 0.4s, low 0.4s, even into the 0.3s. We haven't seen anything like that in the last few months. 
So I think that we're going to remain somewhat elevated and that's going to keep the 253 day moving average going higher. So I think this will continue to climb, but I think we've already reset the sentiment. So no, I don't think we have to wait. I think this is going to turn down after the market has already begun. And I think we already have started to turn up. The second question was, can you look at ENPH? <clears throat> I'll look at that real quick here. Um, they report, I think after the bell today, I love the stock. I mean, I think this stock looks really good. Holding any stock into earnings though, takes a lot of, I mean, you gotta be willing to take a lot of risk. I'd like to say I can guarantee you that it's gonna gap up. I can't guarantee that. I can't even guarantee it's gonna have a good report. But Wall Street seems to like it. I love the AD line building. I love this ascending triangle kind of looking pattern, equal highs, rising lows. 220 is the key area. We, gotta, we need to gap up, get through 220. Relative strength, ENPH, end phase, very strong versus its renewable energy peers. So I'm seeing a lot of good signs here, but I don't know how, what's going to happen when we get the earnings report. We'll see. Speaking of earnings, got a couple I'll just show you real quick. Um, NXPI, actually, let's look at the, pull up these and see how they're reacting today. NXPI down almost 2% after reporting their earnings last night. CDNS was one I really liked going into earnings. Stock up almost 3%. I think this is a really nice looking chart. Any kind of a pullback after earnings, especially a 20 day test. Uh, and I would be very interested in cadence. F5, up uh, almost 6%, $9. So good reaction there. Whirlpool reported up 1.6%, uh, up a couple bucks. Um, HXL, this is Hexel. Uh, they were actually showing some pretty good numbers last night after the bell, not showing anything this morning. Uh, we'll see where it opens, but I think I, I, think I, I saw 10%, up 10% yesterday after the bell. LBRT up 11%, Liberty Oil Field Services. So this is looking pretty good. Going to open back up here, probably close to that 50-day moving average. A um, couple stocks this morning, KO uh, up. This is Coca-Cola up 1%. McDonald's reported up uh, just slightly. UPS down a couple bucks, 1%. Raytheon down 2%. 3M. Up 4%, GE, up 4%, GM, General Motors, a little disappointment there, down about 1.4%. Uh, let's see, uh, ADM, this is Archer Daniels, up about 6%. This is actually uh, one of the stocks in our portfolios. Um, actually, yeah, yeah, I think it's one of the stocks in our portfolios. Uh, coming up later today, Microsoft, Google, Visa, Texas Instruments, Chipotle, Enphase, as I mentioned, um, Teradyne, Juniper Networks, a lot of companies reporting. So we got a lot going on there. Finally, the three you must see, McDonald's. I thought I'd show you this one. It is up a little bit with its earnings. Look for a move. Got to get through 260 and then 267. Next up is Boeing. Boeing has been really looking much, much stronger. I tell you, any kind of a pullback down to about the 148, 150 area looks good to me. Home Depot strengthening coming off of these lows. Still got a lot of congestion overhead between 310 and 320, though. Anyhow, that's it for me. Appreciate you tuning in. Be back uh, on Wednesday over at Trading or over at Earnings Beats for your next Trading Places Live. All you have to do is come over to Earnings Beats about quarter to nine in the morning. Click on that Trading Places Live. Click on the room link and then come right in. Uh, hope to see you then. Happy trading, everybody. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.